Jackson Connell caught a 410 and they You have to pay attention to the very small details to win at the highest level. And that's where we're at. You know, we're at the highest level. These are the best guys in the world that I fish against every tournament. They're the guys that won at their house day in, day out, and they've all came together now, and we travel the country fishing against each other for big money. It's a $50,000 fish. I think the more that you push yourself and like advance in any sport, okay, it don't matter what, what sport you're in, you start dialing in your stuff a lot more, and that happens over time. Check one, two, check, check. Good, all right. All right, so the first lure that I use to catch a bass, all right, we're talking about artificial, all right. I remember it, I'll tell you the exact bridge. I'll tell you the exact bridge that I was under. It was a bridge at Goose Pond Park, okay, in Clanton, Alabama, that's where I'm from. And uh, it was, it's literally just a little creek that runs through my city where I live. And there was a bunch of decent, like largemouth in there. And uh, I remember I was under that bridge with my brother. I had never threw any kind of artificial baits before. And uh, I said, what do I do with this thing? I mean, like, what do you do? You just throw it out there and reel it back? Cause I, I didn't know. So he had it on there with like a little quarter ounce weight or something. And I just kind of threw it out there and I'm, you know what I mean? Like right whenever you first started fishing, you were kind of like, what do I do with this? And I remember that fish went doop, and it went, felt like a catfish bite. Boom, I reeled him in, it was like a two pound largemouth. And I was like, huh. And I think I was like eight years old, but that was my first artificial bait. It was like an old cream worm. That was the first bass I caught in a creek about a mile from my house. All right, here we are. Lake Palestine, back in Texas. So we have heavy hitters this week, Major League Fishing. So what the deal is this week is every day of the tournament, if you catch the biggest fish, it's $25,000. If you make the qualifying round, which is called the knockout round, biggest bass is 50000 championship round a hundred thousand dollar fish so honestly the goal this week is to try to catch biggins but you got to get a bite to catch a biggin and the wind's blowing like 40 mile an hour so we've got great conditions bluebird skies north wind it's just amazing it's springtime i mean look behind us trees blooming birds chirping turkeys gobbling Fish supposed to be biting, right? Crosby. What the crap? In Crosby. That's what was following me, a Crosby. I was sitting there wondering, I was like, what the crap? Oh, I got another one. Oh, this ain't no crappie right here. Yes, sir, it is. I'm on a crappie bag, boys. <laughs> look at that tank. Dang, I'm on a, look, look at that tail he's got. Back to back crappies. Look, watch this. There's a school of them up there. It's about to go down. We got a price for 100 grand. I'm over here catching these crappie. They on bed up there on that flat. It's just too damn windy, dude. You can't do nothing. Bad as you want to get out here and practice, it's like, eh. Nah, it sucks. Yeah, I've got a little area that I really like. I'm gonna go in there and stay all day. If it don't work out, we'll go somewhere else. So, that's the thing. We got two days to, to do it, you know, so. Out of those two days, we're gonna find them somehow, some way. I got me a little green pumpkin purple. 
nuke. Really good bait. I like him. So I like a bandito bug for flipping, but this bait's a little bit fatter, I guess you say, so that straight shank hook does not come through near as easy. Bandito's thin, this right here's fat, so you can go punching, flipping, whatever you want to call it. I'm gonna waste some in doing this this week, guaranteed. We finally captured one. He ain't gonna score though. He's gotta be two pounds. All right, so give you a little back backstory, kind of where I grew up at, and uh, that, like this is 100% the truth. I would get off the bus, so I always took the bus. I get off the bus in the afternoon, and I would just strictly run to the backyard. I would never even go inside. I'd run around the backyard, but I remember I had like two rods. I already had the baits lined out, retied. We're talking about like if you were going for a tournament, I had it like ready. I had a little box and I had like four or five little bags of baits in there. That's it. So I'd hop on my bike and I'd ride like a mile and a half up the road on my bike, literally rushing to get to that pond. And I was like checking the weather, like this before I had a cell phone. I was checking the weather on the TV the, night, the, the day before, like, oh man, it's gonna be raining after school tomorrow. They're gonna be biting a buzz bait. And I remember like doing that. And there was like four ponds right above my house. And uh, there was one about half a mile up on the left. And then you, there was one I wasn't really supposed to be at, but I would sneak in there every now and then. And then there was two like right in this neighborhood. And everybody used to ask me, hey, do you live in this neighborhood? I said, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kin to those people up there. No, I didn't know anybody in there. I just wanted to go fish. He said, why? Why? I don't know why. Tomorrow, day off. Thank gosh. I'm so glad because this wind has been straight throttling us, buddy. It's been bad. I mean, I'm wind burnt, sun burnt. And it's still, look, it's not, it's not springtime. It's still cold. So, uh, day off, guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go bass fishing. We're going to a little local lake, like right up the road. It's like 45 minutes away. And uh, we're gonna go catch some big ones because they're, they're not gonna catch themselves. And I heard somebody told me they were on bed like really, really good over there. So we're gonna go over there, try to catch a little bed fish, one or two. I don't know, maybe get a little practice for Palestine. But right now, Palestine, I don't know why it's, it's and I'm just tired of kicking up mud. I'm just tired of kicking up mud and hitting stumps. It's unbelievable. Like, if you're kicking up mud, you're not catching much. Like, you just ain't. Today, I was kicking up mud, so. The goal is to not kick up mud. That's the goal. It's kind of cold, man. But I think they're going to be biting. Like, we're, we're, we're going to go catch a big one. It's time. And we're going to a really good place. Y'all might recognize it. I ain't going to say where we're going. But you might recognize it. It's kind of... It's kind of fishy there. They kind of... What do they call that place? It's a fishery. It's a fish. No, it's not a fishery. It's a hatchery. That's what they call it. It's a hatchery, fish hatchery. So we're going where they're hatched at, like ducks. Like they hatch them. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. Double digit. It's big fish week. Let's go. local lake this is our day off and what do you do on your day off you go bass fishing
the party has began. First victim. See ya. Baby boy. We're getting better. They're slowly getting bigger. It's been a grind out here on us, boys. Look at that. That's two and a half, almost three. I got you. I did get you. Get in here. We're getting better. Right there in the top. Bop. Chunky one. I like it. I like it. Thank you. Thank you for fighting. Crack and call junior. Pretty good day. Now the wind's starting to blow, we're getting off. So uh, I fish tomorrow on Palestine in the tournament. So right now the fishing's kind of tough. I looked at the weights earlier. There's the biggest fish caught was like a six and a half, but I did catch a couple in practice that was that big. So we'll see. So I fish tomorrow and then I got another day off on Monday. I'm gonna head to Frisco. We'll head to the headquarters there. We're gonna design some baits. So we're always at it. We're always just chasing these bass. I mean, that's it, chasing bass. So have fun today. I gotta catch some tomorrow. Tomorrow's when it matters. So there's a chance to catch a $25,000 fish tomorrow. If you advance on, then it's 50,000 and then a $100,000 fish. So big fish, that's what's on the menu. Dustin Connell. Oh, slight touch, no penalty. Oh, come on, come on. Buddy, she was shallow. Look right here. I mean shallow. Right here. Crack and crawl to the jaws. This is what we do on our day off. We come to the House of Outdoors, we build baits. That's the goal today is to build a bait. Actually like several baits, so I'm pretty excited about it. You know, we're, uh, we're not bass fishing today. We're talking about baits to catch bass. Huh, that's the most important part. Yeah, I ain't met many people here. I've never been to the office like this. I've been to the headquarters. Yeah, this place is awesome. So this is where y'all design everything? Everything. Cool. What's up, man? It's a pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Glad you could make it up. Heard here. a lot about you. Heard a lot about you. Well, I've seen a lot about you, and I'm learning a lot about you. I got you. I got so, you. All good things. Good deal. So how long have you been with these guys? About you got a year. On? About, about a year. year. So it's, it's been cool. I moved from Atlanta to here in Frisco. So Mark Daniel says he knows you. We know each other very well. He's good. He's a good guy, and I know y'all are close. So. He said that you're great at what you do. I try to work hard. That's cool. And, so yeah. I've been meaning to get over here, and I apologize. No, I okay. wanted to come after Fork, but we had all that freezing cold weather. Remember that came through and the mm -hmm. knockout round and all that? And I was going to come over, but the weather was just so crappy. It was iced over. It was during that ice storm or whatever. So I wanted to come then, but I didn't make it. But... I, got, I brought a box, yep. so I've got 
Yeah, that's what helped me a lot because I'm curious. Like, you know, I think the more that you push yourself and like advance in any sport, okay, it don't matter what, what sport you're in, you start dialing in your stuff a lot more. So instead of you hitting that five iron just because you're like, ah, whatever, you're starting to pay attention to the wind a lot more. You're starting to pay attention like, hey, I, I can hit this club like 88 yards and you start dialing in all the specifics and that's what makes you better and you have to pay attention to the very small details to win at the highest level and that's what we're at you know we're at the highest level these are the best guys in the world that i fish against every tournament you know these guys they're the guys that won at their house day in day out and they've all came together now and we travel the country fishing against each other for big money you know but uh yeah just dialing in your tackle and that happens over time you know uh, when i was 16 i started really wanting to dial in on crankbaits and then 17 i remember i was pitching a jig around and then i went through this phase of wanting to go flip grass you know i i, I wanted to really dial that in and then I picked up a swim jig, and every bait is like a chapter. You know what I mean? So it's like buzz bait, swim jig, flipping, crank baiting, fishing deep, drop shot. And once you've graduated and read, like put those chapters in the book, it just adds to the whole knowledge of bass fishing. You're always trying to learn, you know, and that's what we're here for, to just learn and try to understand it the best way we can. So. Evolution over time is just learning each bait every day in those conditions. I gotta go fish again tomorrow. I gotta catch some bass. I'm in group B, so I'll fish again on Palestine tomorrow. Y'all stay tuned. I got a chance to win 25 grand for a big bass. If I advance on, it's 50,000 for a big bass, big bass, and then championship day, hopefully we make it, 100 grand for one bite. He might come on, he might come on that new wizard over there because I'm gonna throw him a lot, so. Gotta catch a few bass. Being on that leading edge of like designing stuff, I think it just gives a lot, it gives you a better opportunity to catch fish. You know what I mean? I mean, that's what we're out here to do, is go catch more fish. So these guys putting their heads together and collaborating with guys like myself, they've got a whole team of people. Some of the best guys in the country, like Isaac. I mean, he's brilliant when it comes to designing stuff and understanding, he fishes also. So me sitting there talking to him and he understands what I'm saying and we all kind of talking. And then you got input from all the other guys. We're trying to make baits to help you catch more fish. You know what I mean? So that that's the cool part about it. And I think that's helping grow the sport for sure. Putting what I love, like the ways that I love fishing, like a jerk bait, putting that kind of knowledge in it and then giving them ideas and saying, hey, we're gonna get you some prototypes. We're gonna test them out. That's awesome. That's like unbelievable. You know, I didn't know it would progress to that. You know, I'm here about to help these guys design a bait and potentially win a tournament at the highest level on that bait. That's cool. I mean, that's like dream. All right, guys. I'm Dustin Connell. I'm part of Guggen Baits. We got new stuff coming down the chute for you. I've messed up the focus, but it don't make a dang. I got to head back, go catch some bass, we'll see. You.